Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the Green Book. I have Miss Erica Dodd and I have Langston Satterwhite. And we're just going to have a discussion about the Green Book. Do you guys know what the Green Book is? I've heard little tidbits about it. Mm -hmm. um, I know as far as when it came to black um, African Americans back then and travel. Yes, yes. It's, it's called the Negro Motorist Green Book. And the Green Book was a directory of black friendly and black owned businesses, restaurants, hair salons, hotels, taverns, nightclubs, guest houses, gas stations, and many other businesses that were safe places for African Americans to stay during the segregated South and, and, and North, mm. okay, during Jim Crow, because Black people were not allowed to go to the gas stations. They were not allowed to. So just imagine you had a child who had to use the bathroom. You had to, you know, go in the woods or, or make your own restaurants. And I remember as a child, when we would go to Alabama, my mom would pack some chicken and sandwiches. And I thought it was just fun, you know. Wow. I didn't realize that that was the reason why. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's, it's really something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm that old, but you, know, <laughs> but you know, they just continue to do these things. So, um, so you, can you imagine taking a road trip in 1954 and you're not being able to stop at a restaurant or, or anything? I mean, how would you feel about that? Well, I think the number one thing I would be would be frightened. Yes. It would put fear in me. Um, to travel that way, I would be definitely on edge, right. um, number one. Mm -hmm. But then again, the great thing is, uh, you know, thank goodness for the Green Book because you'll know safety points and safety right. procedures and where to go, right. where not to go. Right. So that was imperative for that era. For that era. Mm -hmm. And then they had sundown towns, meaning no black person could be in that town after sundown. So you had to find a place to stay. So there was a guy by the name of Victor Hugo Green. He was a mailman, a postman. And he published this book with a list of different places that African Americans can go that was safe, you know? So thank God for uh, Victor Green. I was like, he almost like was the male version of Harriet Tubman in a word. Yeah. Like how she, you know, tried to lead people right. to those certain towns places, and yes. places that would house right. uh, the slaves. It's like, he like, okay, yeah, let me see, can I come up with something that can, that where, you know, basically where black people, we can still do everything that's why people can take vacations and right. And, and go certain places, right. whether it's business, whether, you know, right. I want to be safe too. Right, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, during the, the, the 20th century, the mid 20th century, people had cars, they had jobs, so mm -hmm. they wanted mm -hmm. every family to have a car. So if you have a car, you want it to be able to travel, mm -hmm. to visit family and friends, and, you know, for different reasons different reasons for traveling, you know, recreational, mm -hmm. you had entertainers, mm -hmm. leaning home, right, um, right. Duke Ellington, right. they had to use the Green Book also. Even during the Civil Rights Movement, yeah. Martin Luther King, they had to know places to stay, churches, uh, guest houses, and just imagine you have this big house and you build onto the house. You might build a a nightclub onto the house. You might build a barbershop onto the house. You became this entrepreneur right. because you had these people who would come. You didn't know the people that came from all over the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know. That's like being Beyonce and telling me I can't go to Texas. Okay? Right. What? <laughs> right. So it was exactly. basically cre created out of a need for security. Yes, yes. A secure place because during that time, um, there was lynching and lynching laws. So in 1938, he published the book. Mm -hmm. So the book was published from 1938 to 1963. 
So just, you know, imagine you, you couldn't you couldn't really do anything. Was there ever expounded on how people got the book? Because I feel like that's not something that would have been sold in stores. Well, different uh, postal workers helped him um, throughout the country, mm. you know. And then after a while, people would begin to uh, send him information because he was from New York, mm -hmm. okay? And he start, it started off in New York, and then it went to all, all the states. Wow. That's very interesting. And even foreign countries. My goodness. So can you imagine? This was the only book out there like this. You know? It really, really makes you think, wow. I guess, turned away. I'm just kind of flabbergasted. Because you like how you just said you were a child. So you think, and this is just fun. Right. And it's kind of like, say I turn, I don't know, I turn an age mm -hmm. where um, my parents know, I know you comprehend this, I know you can understand this, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you was to sit there, if, if whoever would have sat there and told you now, I just want you to know, during them little car rides and stuff, did you know we had to do this because, and I mean, I understand why some of them probably wouldn't have told, because they like, right. you know, I can understand why, right. but at the same time, it's just kind of like, if you was to find that out once you're older, like that's why we right. and whatever, it's like that's that's right. very that's yeah that's very. And it just continues on the day. That's why some people right. even today mm -hmm. will pack a notch. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though you know they could go where they want most places, but that's why people pack a lunch now. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What would they do with uh, certain families in case they got stopped or pulled over well, in some downtown? In this one instance, there was a man who pretended like he was a chauffeur. So when the sheriff said, whose car is this? He says, this is my master's car, my boss's car. I'm, I'm taking the lady in the back as the maid, wow. and that's her son. And I'm taking them home. But it was actually his wife and his son. Oh Can you imagine? That is so deep. I would think just, on the spot like that, like, oh. Right, you have to think fast because you were in this sundown town. And it was after sundown. So they were just waiting. They had signs up. Sometimes they would ring a bell. So to think, even think, that if you I don't even know if you want to say lost track of time or whatever, but to think that you not, you, it's about to be that turn. You're like, oh, no, I got to hurry up and get out this get time. Right. Like, Where will I go? So they were able to look in that green book to find a place. Um, let's, say, let's say even here in Ohio, mm -hmm. they found a place. Um, there's a lot of places on, uh, I think it's 55th, but I look in the green book here. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting that this would be great for people to just come and look. Mm. Look in here because a lot of these places are no longer here anymore. Like like eighty percent of the, the places are gone. Wow. They don't even exist. So but when I read that book I was like, Wow, we need to talk about this and let people know about the green book. It's, you know, it's like a yellow pages. But a green book, a book for uh, African Americans to find a safe place to eat, wow. to have a safe place to to swim, wow. to you know, just to do anything. My goodness, you know. And I thought it's interesting when you watch certain things live, like how you said you um, just started watching it. You watched the series Lovecraft Country. It points out some of these things that was going on. And you seen the man hold up the green book and you, you know, you don't know. Right. Like, oh, he's just holding up green. I don't know why he's doing it, but he's just doing it. And, right. and they had, they dealt with that where there was a scene where they trying to hurry up before the sun down, the police is back there chasing them and they couldn't go over the speed limit. It's like if they went over the speed limit, the police was going to, the white policeman was going to pull them all over. over. That was going to waste they, time. Yeah. If they didn't hurry up, they were still going to get caught because it was sun down. And it's like, that's what I said. If, 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 even though that was for TV, it's like, I'm sure that was real. I know that happened to yeah. someone. Yeah, it could be based on. Uh, 
Wow. Come true. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's, it's amazing to me. Now, they did have a certain gas stations. Um, I think it's called the Esso mm -hmm. Gas Esso Gas Station mm -hmm. uh, sponsored the Green Book, and it was Standard Oil, mm -hmm. and uh, the Rockefellers own Standard Oil. Wow! So that's just something that's amazing too. Um, the fact that there were certain gas stations that said, "Okay, we will allow African Americans to mm -hmm. to come here to get gas, whatever." Hmm. Economically, it makes sense. I was about to say, that sounds smart. Get your money in everybody. Right, because if people are driving cars now, and everyone has a car in their driveway or whatever, mm -hmm. I would want to get your money as well as everyone else's money. Mm -hmm. That would make sense to me. And so, yeah, that was a lot because they had to really uh, struggle with the Jim, Jim Crow laws that was yeah. going on at the time, right. um, which was mm -hmm. difficult and the hardships ships with traveling. Mm -hmm. um, say for instance, if they couldn't make it to a hotel, were there families or locals who would help out mm -hmm. at times as well? Right, right, and just imagine, because um, Jim, Jim Crow laws were state and local laws that enforced racial segregation in all public facilities. Mm -hmm. So those laws were already, they were there. Just to think. It's so you going to see a loved one, you might have to go yeah. to a funeral, you yeah. may right. I mean, whatever reason, mm -hmm. you, you, it had to be very, very scary. <laughs> to think it was that serious, mm -hmm. that racism was that serious to where you, like I said, even gas. Oh no, right. we're not going right. to get black people gas. And it's somewhat... Like, huh? You don't want my money? Right, right. That's no. not look at my skin. You don't want my money right. to flourish your your establishment? Like, really? Right. Nah, I don't, mm. And even then, I don't want you to see you. I'm not giving you money because if I'm paying just like everybody else, you ain't sitting me in the back nothing. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I mean, I know people always say, ah, oh, if you was there, it might have been there. And maybe it would. I'm just, but I'm saying now, I don't, you know, when you really love it, like, um, no. Right. A lot of people, I pay, I'm, I'm, I'm patronizing just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I should get nice silverware. I should get nice plates. I should be able to sit anywhere in the restaurant like I want to. But, but during that time, it's terrible. That's Jim terrible. Crow and the segregated country. That was just that out. serious. That it's was country. law. Jim Crow, like, yes. Yes. that is oh. crazy to me. Yeah. I would never understand that, and I don't want to. And the Esso gas station also distributed the Green Book there. Oh, okay, so that there was, was see, certain that's places where uh, uh, you can go okay. and get it, get the Green Book. The Green Book was in a lot of these establishments. That's why I was wondering. Right, they also sold mm -hmm. sold them there. I think they were uh, five cents, if I'm not mistaken. I couldn't mistake. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know something like that ain't in stores. Might be like, uh, no, we're not selling. Right. But, uh, and I think that was genius of him to come up with that. Yes, it was. You know, it really was. Mm -hmm. I think um, he had a friend who was uh, a Jewish, he had a Jewish friend, a Jewish mail carrier, mm -hmm. who, um, who had something similar, but it was for Jewish people because Jewish people couldn't go uh, anywhere. I think he may have read it in a newspaper mm -hmm. or something like that, mm -hmm. and he decided to come up with that idea himself. Wow. That was smart of him, besides the whole thing being smart. That was smart for him to be able to reach out to somebody whom obviously was dealing with this semi the same thing that we right. African Americans. African Americans were dealing with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think there was more than like ninety five hundred mm -hmm. different businesses mm -hmm. in the Green Book. Wow. Wow. So there were a lot. There were different businesses that were flourishing. Just mm -hmm. flourishing, you know, and very interesting, very interesting. But one thing I can say is blacks refused to be excluded from the American experience. They allowed They were still able to overcome and, and still get out there. And they were brave, wow. yeah. brave, yeah. and still brave today because sometimes we run into situations with, you know, Police and different mm -hmm. things like that, even mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just a 
lot, this is great information. Like you said, it may be a lot of people who were aware of the Green Book, um, but we were familiar with the experiences from books like uh, the Watsons go to Birmingham. Um, um, that's a great book that I read, right. and they actually I recently turned it into uh, a movie. A movie, um, yes. And it was great to see it in movie form, but. Um, like you say, just the horrors of, of traveling back then with right. your family, with your children. Um, it's something that we um, we just can't relate to in a way. You mm, know, that's true. But we still deal with discrimination, right. you know, in this day and age, but just to have the have it in the law. Um, that's right. something, it was, it was a part of the law, right. that's something that's just unimaginable right. for me, mm -hmm. personally. How can you fight the law? Um, you would think the law is there to provide safety for you mm -hmm. uh, and freedoms, but what do you do when the law is, is against, against you? you? Exactly. It's against you. Still eat. Oh, right. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and a lot of things today, you know, with, um, being, being driving while black, mm -hmm. you know, it's still happening today. Maybe not to that extent, but right, you know, right. So we have to be careful even driving. You have to tell your sons and daughters to be careful when mm -hmm. driving, what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have some wonderful books here. Mm -hmm. Driving while black. We have the uh, actual uh, DVD. Um, and the book, mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. I recommend you guys look in the Green Book and, and see the different organizations, different businesses that mm -hmm. African American people had yes. because of the Green Book. Wow. And now we have the movie, the Green Book, as well. We have the movie, the Green Book, and then we also have this book here for uh, for children. We have a hand. children's book about the Green Book. So, oh wow. If you guys get a chance to come to the East Cleveland Public Library and check out our information on the Green Book. Mm -hmm. you know, if you need more information, we are here to help you as much as possible. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so, this, this is very um, very interesting, isn't it? And right. right. it was deep. Right, and you yeah. learned a lot because you don't hear about it, especially since the, the landscape is gone. Those places are now gone. Eighty percent of the people who are in this book and the, the businesses that were in this book are gone. Wow. I mean, but that's the problem right there. Every time every, when when stuff gets quote unquote dealt with, mm -hmm. it's supposed it's just supposed to be act like it was never there. <laughs> like you say, I never knew about this, you mm -hmm. know, until I was say when I watched the, little, the series of Lovecraft, and when I actually seen, I didn't see the movie yet, mm -hmm. but when I seen the movie, uh, the trailer, of you the didn't movie, know what the Green Book was. I don't know. I'm thinking, oh, okay, wow, new movie, new concept. You know, just thinking people mm -hmm. coming up and stuff, or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's like that one saying I say when they say, if you don't, I'm saying it wrong. But all, it, it basically, in a nutshell, is saying if if you don't know. You're doomed to repeat history. Mm -hmm. So, it's a good, it's a great thing that we do have books. We have mm -hmm. books that have right. been passed down um, from history that has testimonials. Yes. You may can destroy infrastructure. People may pass on, but we do have history well documented in books yes. that That's right. passed down That's right. from yes. lineage right. to either our grandchildren right. to their children. Right. Imagine if we didn't have these books. If we don't have, if we don't have the infrastructures around anymore. Right, and once the laws, you know, change, the segregation was over, then there was no need for the book anymore. Exactly. Right. You know what I mean? But that don't mean it didn't happen. Yeah. Right. And that don't mean it should not be known. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we hope right. you guys enjoyed this video about the Green Book. Come into East Cleveland Public Library. And you can have a chat with us, or you can just come in and, and get some information, all kind of information out on the internet as well. Right. So we want to thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you.